And let me tell you, this one's a thriller, everyone. Oh, I'm so excited to talk oh, about yeah. everything that's happened. It is. It has been a bumper <laughs> week in the world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. The game will never be the same. Anti-kite mechanics gone. Yes. Uh, they really struggle with tanks. They really struggle with tanks. Yeah, um, but that's actually not the first thing in our document, so we'll start with the first thing. <laughs> uh, right, do you want a free faction change? Because you might be able to get one if you invite your friends back to World of Warcraft. They've been sending out this promo here. We're offering select players an opportunity to earn a special reward for them and their friends. Uh, we know every hero needs a little encouragement getting back into the action, so prospective marketer. Through June 21st, we'll be offering select players a faction change when they invite an eligible friend back to World of Warcraft to ensure everyone has the opportunity to play together and try out cross-faction instances. Up to five eligible friends invited back will be awarded 30 days of game time. So uh, there you go. If I suppose then if you are the referrer, you will be getting a free faction change. If you are the referee, you'll get 30 days of game time. How about? Which, uh, yeah, I mean, worth knowing. Um, mm. Very obvious to not have Blizzard benefits there, but also if that fits you, then I suppose it's a pretty good little situation. And the next thing, anti-tank uh, tank, bleh, words are hard. Anti-kite tank mechanics. Gone. Yep. So, uh, late, late last week, Blizz posted a few rounds of blue posts uh, announcing the removal of many anti-kite or fervent strike effects to mob abilities in Shadowlands Dungeons. Right. So, back in BFA and continuing to Shadowlands, Blizzard added Fervent Strike mechanics to certain M plus dungeon mobs that would prevent tanks from kiting them away. If a tank was not in range of uh, the mob when it cast one of these tank busters, it would just target the nearest player in melee range, and of course, because it's a tank buster, it would just fucking kill them. Hmm. Uh, now, this is probably something that they did as a reaction to really big, uh, like the meta strategies that just involved kiting a whole bunch of mobs. Yeah. That's what okay. happened in Legion Amplus. I mean, what did they expect? They put Vengeance Demon Hunter in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, look at that. It's just Infernal Strike across the entirety of a dungeon. Beautiful. Also, tanks can't drop threat if they try. <laughs> God. So Legion essentially, in two batches, they're gone. Yep. And that's that. I suppose... Well, that's that. I don't know. I don't have any crazy analysis. Yeah. This is probably just going to be nicer to tanks. They're going to feel... A little bit less like they, they move and they get someone killed. Yeah, well, this is weird because this definitely feels like this was, you know, added. But it's so, it's so kind of, I don't want to say pointless. It's so unintuitive, right? Because I don't think there's any example of World of Warcraft where I would assume the default behavior is I'm out of range, that cast finishes, and it doesn't fizzle. Because yeah. that's obviously the default thing. But then that's abusive. And that's kind of that weird thing of... Tanking is just a really super weird concept. It's hard to design. It's, but that's the thing where it's also super hard to design when it comes to scaling. Because th this is the thing where I think they're just up against... Well, I mean, it's, it's just an arms race, right? That's always the point for this like super high scaling. Where it is literally just, oh, this is really... Uh, this is impossibly hard. So people will find impossible solutions. They kind of... Oh yeah, you know, you, you know. I'm trying to think of the perfect example, because obviously there's like you know the, the the whole jump high high kind of thing, where it's like you know they're going jump this high. You're like, well, I can't do that. Well, I'll have to find you know. I'll go find a way to it. I'll go get uh like a, a the high jump kind of pull. I'll learn to high jump to get over your arbitrary insane restrictions, and then that's just an arms race back and forward, back and forward. And I think it's just tanking, it's just a it's just a difficult thing to yeah. make make sense, especially oh. when it comes to damage scaling up and then also the the inherent benefits of being able to have a lot of mobs together for aoe it's like how do you do that how do you solve that without substantially more prescriptive game design or a bunch of other arbitrary limits such as i mean that's like the way active mitigation well so, so maybe they're like oh we have a category of of spell you just have to use these and that's the game plan. I, mean, I really know i don't i don't tank yeah, well, i don't yeah. think about tanking that much yeah i mean it's like the i mean i guess the arbitrary way that it's done a lot of the times, it never really feels super arbitrary in World of Warcraft whenever there's like a barrier between things because it naturally falls away or breaks maybe you kills whatever mobs and there's usually a mob that holds it. But in like in FF14, the only thing that stops people from pulling almost entire dungeons and just kind of kiting them along and occasionally doing things is the fact that there are literally solid walls you can't get past. 
and that's a thing of like there's no it feels insane to actually have to to be able to solve that problem as difficult it goes up just because people get honestly players are too good gamers too strong that's the takeaway gamers too strong and design is hard well i guess i just think like what's going to be fun for the most people you know will, will uh, it be crazy kiting pools at a mythic plus 10 or is that maybe for the people who want to do a mythic plus 23 and are really pushing themselves I don't yeah know. I don't know. that's where you run into the problem of i think metagame strategies and stuff like that it's that whole is that whole thing of hey playing the way it has the most fun oh wait you're a goal oriented uh, achievement oriented gamer you're going to destroy your own fun just to get something done slightly faster slightly more efficiently or get something slightly harder to do that's the thing like i guess this is basically it how, how often of the time do you play a game on very hard you know it's not going to be fun but you want to do it there yeah, versus, because like, yeah, I'm a real yeah. gamer. I do it very hard. Yeah. yeah. Versus, I'll play it on hard. It'll be more fun. Yeah. I guess that's the thing where. So, it's who knows? Difficult. I guess, tanks, let us know. Maybe this is just an annoying thing that's no longer there for you. And that's really the height of it. Yeah. Hopefully just, so. Just, uh, get super anti kite mechanics where mobs can't be slowed. Sorted. Perfect. I feel like I've just put a massive target on my head from tank players for that. <laughs> I don't mean it. I don't mean it. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, no, Grant, just have a Mythic Plus. It's like an affix that's above 15. This is how you hard design mm. it this way. No, it's a special affix that's mm. above Mythic Plus 20. It's called Sticky. Uh, yeah. And the mo mobs, they, they just stick with mm. you. That's it. You yeah. move, they move as fast as you do. Perfect. Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Design, solved. Easy. Uh, Krenter says, if you are an achievement hunter, isn't doing the actual or isn't doing the degenerate stuff actually creating fun for you? Yes. Yeah, for some. But this is where we get into the very annoying problem of being an MMO and being a multiplayer game. The World of Warcraft community certainly has the issue of metagaming, where suddenly if someone sees a tank who, maybe they've looked at the best experience in the world, the fastest dungeon of all time, it was super clean, super clear, super fast, and it was because this tank was kiting like crazy and doing these hyper-optimized strats. A lot of players, because the game is so goal-oriented, because you have so, like, your time is your enemy in World of Warcraft. Time is your enemy in World of Warcraft substantially more than it is anything else. Obviously, that could technically be true of anything, but even within the sort of realm of if you go a little bit faster, you'll get your loot more efficiently, you'll reach the end faster. So as soon as you, as soon as that player meets a tank who doesn't do that hyper-optimized strat, who doesn't do the, the really fun thing that the, well, what the achievement hunter found really fun, because this other tank is a different playstyle because they're playing a lower difficulty, and maybe even this person didn't even experience it in a dungeon, maybe they just watched it in a video, and then they're just like, fuck you, tank, you're shit. You're not doing this hyper-optimized, super niche strat that doesn't even really apply in the circumstance. And that's just kind of a problem, I guess. I'm not trying to offer a solution or having a big think. Literally just, <laughs> that's a problem and it's annoying. Yeah, it's just like Brutal. interesting the things, yeah. uh, getting to the headspace of the people who might have to grapple with these problems and try to think, well, how the hell do you fix this? Yeah. Um, now, another thing. Rygalon, nerfed again in Mythic. Uh, yeah, just a 5% health nerf. His auto attack damage down by 15%. Just once again, they are really still trying to... Uh, they're trying to work it out. Uh, I mean, we do have a thinking face uh, from Dakor, but he does end in his little, uh, you know, in the thought box with, man, I'd love to see all the internal data they have for raid clear rates and progression over time because it's clearly informing all of these. That's exactly it. We may, uh, it's, you know, it's very easy to have zero skin in this game, not being Mythic Raiders and, uh, you know, grandstand about the moving of the goalposts. But what numbers do they have? What do they see? We don't know. And uh, maybe the numbers they're seeing are spooking them a bit. Maybe, you know, they just have heuristics. Maybe they have some benchmarks, you know, by 10 weeks into a tier, normally this many Mythic Guilds are still going or this many have dropped out. And maybe they're looking at those numbers and people are just dropping off like flies. So they feel like they have to do this. Yeah. Right? F full on just blizzard. What are your dev I see to your stuff like? Yeah, yeah. It's, it would be interesting to know. Uh, they, they, have, they have already talked about their philosophies with this. It's yeah. just we don't know the data that is informing that philosophical is it, decision. <laughs> is it really that bad? Like, But I guess that's the point. Who knows? It must, it must be. be. Must be. Yeah. Uh, I guess if we had weekly parse rates, we could compare mm. Mythic this many weeks into this tier with some yeah. other tiers. That might be an interesting analysis to do someday. Uh, now then, dungeon nerfs. Another, just a whole 
bunch of them. Don't think I need to go into all of the uh, specifics. Well, actually, no, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Dark Wars, he's called out the important things. So they nerfed the castigate, uh, castigate damage on Tarvold. Uh, and they nerfed Agonize from uh, Beryllia in Zangwine Dabs. Apparently, these are very welcome on Grievous, uh, or Grievous mm -hmm. and Tyrannical Weeks. Good. Uh, health and damage reduction to the three mini-bosses at the end of Spires of Ascension before oh, the last yeah. boss. Fuck cool. Them. Yeah, well that's... No, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, the Absorb Shield on Nalthor, the Rhyme, uh, Rhyme Binder, the last boss of Necrotic Wake, atop the Maldraxi Necropolis. Mm -hmm. That's another great change, apparently, because during Tyrannical Weeks, and especially if you didn't properly plan out your Kyrian weapon and CD usage, uh, then the boss could just take ages to do. But not only that, but while the shield was up, the whole group is taking damage and increases over time. So, uh, ah, yes, you're trucked. The more you're trucked. Yeah, head like a truck. Trucked for now. Or, or ducked. Yeah. I actually don't think, I actually don't think he just meant fucked. Oh. I think he actually meant trucked as in hit like a truck. Ah, um, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I suppose yeah. that does make sense for how, how much we stack up. Uh, the other thing, um, no doubt you're aware of this, um, yes, we've got a video coming out on it pretty soon. Basically, Venari, you end up getting in-game mail, you also, that gift, you do actually get that gift. Basically, it turns out she ended up working with Zolotarios, or Zolartios, whatever, the mm. eternal uh, traveler guy. That appeared as a part of the Shadowlands pre-order. Oh my god, they're locking lore content behind big oh pre-orders? Um, Bastards. So yeah, then you know you get this little device, you can talk to it, and it asks you some questions. Uh, there's voice dialogue, like a fortune-telling ball. Don't yeah. let me keep you. I suppose you have uh, something more important to do than saving reality itself. There's yeah. a mystery to unravel. Perhaps you will not fail me yet. I wonder what she's talking about. Just a bunch of those. Yeah, it's just uh, then a little archive to replay her rules. And uh, <laughs> it is full on straight up. We paid this voice actor too much. People like these lines too much. Here's a tour. We can listen yeah. to them anytime you want. Yeah. Which, you know what? Fair enough. Yeah, Good a wee stuff. bit of flavor. So uh, nice off a full lore sort of breakdown. And also just trying to give you more of a storytelling of the whole thing. Yeah. Not just the new stuff, but also the general finale stuff. Because it's way more interesting than it is in face value, and you actually sit down and think about it. So I'll have that up uh, decently soon. Next then, uh, I don't really know how much we should go into this because I feel like this may just be something, a topic for the people who are, you know, high-end Mythic Plus tanks, and they're maybe not the people who are watching our content. But basically, the Codex nice. of the first technique, um, it was heavily nerfed, then partially reverted, and the issue there... Um, Essentially, it used to be super powerful. Then they made it like scale or whatever, and it was basically useless or like it didn't scale. Then they fixed it and made it so it scaled with item level, and suddenly it was good again. Uh, but this uh, can, you know, mess up people's uh, spending of resources and planning for their character. That's kind of unfortunate. And I think they just don't really feel like the, uh, you know, like some of these were undocumented. People won't feel like the communication was good enough yeah. because it is impacting their gearing decisions. Yeah, well, that's exactly the problem, right? Where it's like, especially this is kind of it feels the same to me as all of the mythic nerfs where it's like the changes just continually happen and there's so little communication especially with the high-end community that should you know what is what exactly is stopping the person who's been doing this nerf just going hey we're thinking of nerfing this because it's a bit strong should be and getting a little bit of community feedback and then been able to you know delve into that I guess that's that's a case of that's, you know, they probably just did this quick. Or, oh, that, you know, scanning over. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Oh, I'll fix that. Yeah, thing, thing yeah, broken uh, fix. Yeah, yeah, thing broken fix as opposed to this is a design decision that is impact, that is like impact yeah. and stuff. But that's a thing of it's just like that's a lot of time. That's a lot of effort. That's an item that people thought. And it's like the rules, it's like I keep saying, when it comes to the nurse and stuff, it's like just you can see the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. So you very much are aware you're not in like the belief that this is like a meaningful system anymore because the floor has been pulled out from under you occasionally. And it happens just enough that people are like, oh, fuck. And it's that, it's that slow death of for everyone who gets a trinket nerfed that they farm for. What are the odds then? Well, I'm not fucking playing this anymore. Yeah. Fuck, I spent, I spent a week trying to get that trinket. I did fucking try. I'm out of here. Because I know I would have that experience for sure. Absolutely. That shit is extremely frustrating. Especially when like, you know, here's a goal. Oh, the goal's meaningless. 
It's almost like you're on this fucking grand Indiana Jones treasure hunt. You get to the end, you lift the treasure and it crumbles in your hand. You're like, sweet, wonderful. Glad I did all that then. It's like, was it fun? Maybe, but I did it for the goal. So especially for goal-oriented players, it's just kind of, yeah. It's just pulled out from underneath them. So communication could be a little bit better there. A little bit better. And also just, yeah. oh. It's, it gets a different flavor of the fun place as well. It's like, why are you not buff instead of nerf? It's like they're just making kind of poor decisions generally. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Interesting. I think it's something that probably impacts a small subset of a small subset, but, uh, well. Yes. Yeah. 